Hi everyone, this is lesson five. You've survived some hardcore trick. And this is the stuff that you've learned. The double angles, the compound angles, reciprocals, we've got identities. We've got more stuff from the from, from Pythagoras, from just having sine squared plus cos squared is one. All this stuff now we have to use or use bits of it when we're doing proof. I'm going to do a couple of these and we'll do the others in class when I'm there. Because these are these are nice, these are very algebraic, but very, very nice. But if you do it right, it's four lines. If you do it wrong, it's four pages. So we have to kind of think about them when we do them. Ah, so that's no use if that's actually completed. <laughs> this could be a very short video, in fact. Right, so pretending that this isn't here, this is a bit of a roll on like that. Let's have a look on the next page. No. Right, we'll do this one. I'll talk you through my, how I would do this. <sighs> so can I, get, I can get rid of it. That's all right. Please. Right, I look at it and I think about my big thing is can I make a fraction and then can I combine fractions? If I can have something with a fraction which I can then combine, so I've got fractions. That you can combine. That's always a good starting point. So if you look on the right, tan is sine theta over cos theta. So I'd have a sine squared theta over cos squared over cos theta. So that can actually do it working that way. But I might want to work with the left hand side, which I will do. I can quite merrily do it from the right hand side. So I work from one side to the other. I know that secant is 1 over cos. If I combine it as a single fraction, now I'll do it in two steps. So I'm going to have this as 1 over cos theta minus cos theta times by cos theta over cos theta. You might think I don't really need to do that, but some people just struggle with this little bit. So what I've got on the top is a 1 minus cos squared theta. On the bottom, I've got a cos theta. There. So I've got it all out of cos, and I've got 1 minus cos squared on the top. But 1 minus cos squared Sine squared. I'm aiming towards sine over cos times sine. I'm aiming towards sine squared over cos. So sometimes I'll look at both sides and almost find the middle ground and know I'm going the right way. So my left hand side is sine theta times sine theta over cos theta. Now, people don't like this next step. I'm just going to slightly rewrite this as the left-hand side is sine theta over cos theta times sine theta. And people don't like this idea of going from here to here because they're dividing over everything. But if I said to you, what's 3 times 4 all divided by 2, you'd say 6. And if I said to you, what's 3 times 4 over 2, you'd say 6. And if I said to you, what's 3 over 2 times 4, you'd still say 6. So because of that, I can split that whole big divide up. Or take it the other way. Now this has now got, oh, press one button. This has now got me to my left, oh, hang on. My left hand side as being tan theta sine theta, which is what I've got on the right hand side. If I'm doing this properly, really, really full on properly, I should then say that the right hand side 
is a tan theta sine theta. So what I've got here then is the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Therefore, my equation works, which was secant theta minus cos theta is exactly the same as tan theta times sine theta. Let's figure that. Other people do kind of botch it and run jobs on this. They just kind of get it there and say, ta-da, it's done. This little bit here at the bottom is a little bit more formal, makes it look right. Right, let's have a quick look on the others. I'll give you, I might give you some hints for these, then we'll do them in class. Or you'll do them in class. If they're in class, then oh, there we go. There. So for this one, I would expand, I could work on either side, and I'd expand brackets and see what you get out. Or you could combine the single fractions and see what you get out. So it's entirely up to you how you do it. So I would expand brackets and see what you get out. So I'd uh, work with the left hand side and expand brackets. Oops. With the right hand side, well, sorry, question three, I'd work with the right hand side and see what you get out. See if you can split it. See how it works. Because you can do it. It's a little bit messy, but you can do it. You can get there. They end up with two massive fractions. Uh, I'm going to stop there. I've a few more questions. But I want you to have a look at these in class. And I'll give you hints in class. So well done, everybody. These are proper, full-on algebra, but they're nice.